You brought so much joy in my life. With strong hands and a heart full of love. Hey YouTube, it's your girl, Mama Kathy, coming to you today with a story that I ran across on Facebook today. You know, it's not the first time that I saw this story, but I thought that I would like to share it with you guys because although this happened in 1944, unfortunately, we are still suffering from the judicial system that's supposed to be out here, that's supposed to be equal, and it's supposed to be fair to all of us. But I always say that there's two judicial systems. There is one for us and there is one for them. So anyway, I want to talk to you about this little boy. His name is George Stinney Jr. He was born October 21st, 1929 in Pineswood, South Carolina. He died June 16th, 1944 in Columbia, South Carolina. He was only 14. How he died was by the electric chair, which they used to call Old Sparky. And he was convicted of first degree murder of two little white girls. One name was um, Betty June Binnickel. I think I said her name right. An eight-year-old Mary Emma Thines. Um, they said that he confessed to it. He didn't have a lawyer present. His parents wasn't allowed to be there. And there was never a signed confession all the way up till they killed him. He always said that he was innocent, that he never um, gave that confession. And also um, his family was ran out of town once he was convicted. Um, it was just crazy. He had um, two brothers and he had um, a sister. And, it, and of course, his mom is dead. Um, later on, his conviction was thrown out and it was vacated. And that was in 2014. But the reason I want to share this story with you guys is because the judicial system back in 1944 is basically no different than what it is right now in 2017. Um, it's two different judicial systems, like I said. It's one for us and it's one for them. And unfortunately, black people are cons considered um, guilty until proven innocent. And then we have a lot of innocent people of all color locked up in jail for something they didn't do because you have you know the people that you trust to do the right thing they cover up evidence you know um, they lose evidence you know they only present what they want you to see and it's it's, it's terrible i have some video footage that I would like for you guys to look at and consider when you're looking at this little young boy who was 14 who was beautifully murdered in my eyes because they didn't he didn't have a chance you understand in 1944 you could not have um black people could not be on a juror because in 1944 they had a law on the books that said you had to be registered to vote in 1944, black people was not allowed to vote, so we could not be on a jury. So he was convicted by 12 white jurors in less than 10 minutes after they rested their case. Now, his attorney that he had did not work for him at all. He did not question the police officers. He didn't put anybody on the stand. It was just a whole big debacle mess. Okay, so I want you guys, you know, to look at the video footage and then I'm going to show you um, a picture of him, how tiny he was. And then they electrocuted him in old Sparky, which was the electric chair. And it was meant for a man sized person, not a child. And 
you know, he was carrying around his Bible and they made him sit on his Bible like a booster chair to, um, to kill him. So anyway, I want to, um, share this with you guys because the judicial system is not too much better today. You know, it's like prove yourself innocent. You know, you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And it's too many innocent people on death row or in jail, period. You understand? And unfortunately, if we're not lawyers, judges, prosecutors, then we really don't know how the do system system is supposed to work, but it do not work in our favor because they do so many underhanded things, you know, behind doors, you know, like they settle out what your case is going to be before you even come to trial sometimes. So anyway, like I said, I ran across this story again today and I wanted to share it with you guys. He was exonerated in 2014. So I'm just going to read just a little bit of what it says here. It says, um, this is um, a little bit of the um, case background. I already said some, but I'll, I'm just going to read this to you guys. It said, in 1944, George Julius Steiny Jr. lived in South Carolina. The 14-year-old African-American boy lived with his father, George Steiny Sr., mother Annie, brother Charles, age 12, and John, age 17, and sister Kathleen, age 10, and Annie, age 7. George Sr. worked at the town sawmill, and the family lived in a house provided by George Sr. employer. It was a small working, working class mill town where white and black neighborhoods were separated by railroad tracks. The town was typically was typical of small southern towns of, of the time with separate schools and churches for black and white residents who rarely interacted. The body of Betty June by Nickel, age 11, and Mary Ann Thine, age 8, was found in a ditch on the black side of North Carolina, the city that they lived in, on March 23rd, 1944. They had been beaten with a weapon, very least reported as a piece of a blunt metal or a railroad spike. The girls was last seen riding their bicycles looking for flowers. As they passed the tiny property, they asked young George Steiny um, and his sister Annie if they knew where to find May Pops. It's a local name for... According to Anne, she was with George at the time of the murders. When the girls did not return home, search parties were organized. George's father was among the searchers. The bodies of the girls was found the next morning on the black side of town in a ditch filled with muddy water. According to the article reported by the wire service on March 24, 1944, March 24, 1944, and published widely with the mistake of the boy's name preserved, the sheriff announced the arrest and said that Judge, I'm sorry, that George Julius had confessed and led officers to a hidden piece of iron. Both girls had suffered blunt force trauma to the face and head. Reports, I'm sorry, reports different as to what kind of weapon had been used. According to reports by the medical examiners, those wounds had been inflicted by a blunt instrument with a round head about the size of a hammer. Both girls' skulls were punctured. The girls had not been sexually assaulted and their hymens were intact. The medical 
the medical examiner reported the genitalia of the older girls and said they were slightly bruised. All right, so I gave you the background on the story. Now I want to let you listen to a video clip that caught my attention today. It just really reiterates, you know, what's going on. And he's talking about how terrorists and terror. Well, you know, we have terrorists and terror in our own United States by our own people. And it makes no sense. You understand? So that's the only reason why i wanted to bring you the story today you know to talk about you know the justice system back then and the justice system justice system now and it seems like we still can't win you know it seems like we have so many so 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 many young black men locked up in somebody's penitentiary you understand? I'm not saying that some don't deserve to be there, but it seems like a lot, a lot of our young black men are in prison. So, and they build them more and more prisons, you know, and you know, a lot of these prisons is state owned and they make a lot of money by having, you know, these people locked up in jail, you know, regardless of the color. You understand they make a lot of money so it's their mission is to get as many people locked up as they can so anyway i want you guys to listen to this video and then at the end i'll show you you know a picture of the young fellow you know it's it, it you know it's kind of sad you know even though he was exonerated in 2014 he got a full pardon and everything but that baby died a horrible miserable death and to me he was murdered all right so comment down below and tell me what you guys think if i'm right if i'm wrong i'm from indifferent i mean whatever your comments is just please comment down below and let me know what you guys think you know of the story itself you know and about our justice system today I just want to know, you know, your opinion because everybody isn't entitled to their opinion. So please don't attack me for mine. But if you do, oh, well, I'm a big girl with thick skin. I could take it. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. It's Mama Kathy. If you enjoy this channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And if you think the video is worth it, share it to someone. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, you know, they might find something interesting out about whatever I'm talking about on whatever given day. But anyway, just wanted to bring this to you guys today because I just happened to run across it today. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. And I love you all out there in my YouTube family. Bye. This is the story of George City. Uh, he was just 14 years old when he was taken by the authorities and charged with a crime. They said that he had killed 11-year-old Betty June Binnaker and 8-year-old Mary Emma Thames. This was back in the year 1944. Now, it turns out he did not do any of those things, and just yesterday, he was exonerated. Finally, the state of South Carolina said he didn't do it. We should not have convicted him. But they didn't just convict him they executed. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, unfortunately, about how that happened, because it's important that you know uh, what happened in this country and the remnants of that culture and that history. So first, let's show you, George. Uh, you got to understand the context here. He was just 90 pounds. He was 5 feet 2. He was 14 years old. They claim that he uh, killed those girls and threw them in a ditch and that he had the capability of doing this. Now, did they have any evidence on him? Well, they had three cops uh, who said he did it and said that he confessed to it. Did they have any witnesses? No. Did they have any physical evidence? No. Did the cops write down the confession at the time? No. Were there any blacks on the jury in South Carolina back in 1944? No. They had uh, a law at the time that said you had to be a voter to be on a jury. But blacks weren't allowed to vote, so they weren't allowed to be on juries. 
In fact, almost no one there was black at all in the courtroom. Uh, 81 days after he was arrested and charged with this, they brought him to trial. The trial lasted about two and a half hours, during which his white defense attorney, who had not worked a criminal case before and who was going to be running for political office and needed votes in that area, did not present a single defense witness outside of Stinney. He didn't even cross-examine the police. <laughs> Stinney says that he never confessed. Well, now we know he didn't do the crime. <laughs> the police bring no evidence except they say, yeah, trust us, he confessed earlier. No cross-examination. The trial lasted two and a half hours. <laughs> the jury took 10 minutes to convict him. And then he was led uh, to death row in uh, Clarendon County, South Carolina. We actually have a picture of him being led to death row. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, he was carrying a Bible. By the way, just if you're not absolutely clear yet uh, that he didn't do it. Uh, historian in 2004 took this case on and uh, investigated it further and found out that there was a wealthy white family in the area who said that the real culprit did a deathbed confession and said that he had killed the two young girls. And a member of that family was a part of the process that picked Stinney as the real culprit. It's impossible to know now, looking back 70 years, who knew and didn't know what exactly happened. Really, they were sure that this 14-year-old had done it, this 90-pound 14-year-old. Did they care that someone else had done it and was going to get away with the murders? They didn't care. They strapped him into Old Sparky. That's literally what the electric chair in South Carolina was called. And then, just as the story is horrible, it's about to get worse. Since he was so young, uh, they couldn't strap him in right. They took the Bible he was carrying and made him use it as a booster seat. And then Joy James, an author, writes, the mask covering his face slipped off because the mask didn't fit. It was an adult's mask. Revealing his wide open, tearful eyes and saliva coming from his mouth. The first jolt had, had not worked. After two more jolts of electricity, the boy was dead. His family was not at the execution. His family was not at the trial. Why? Because they told the family, if you don't leave town immediately, we're going to lynch you all. You want to talk about terror. You know, we talk about terrorism today in America. This was true terror. And they weren't there for their 14-year-old boy. The Associated Press says the rest of the family didn't see the teen again until his funeral when Stinney's body, burned from the electric chair, was put in an open casket. South Carolina has executed 289 people in the 20th century, and 82% of them were black, according to the Death Penalty Information Center. This legacy is not just about George Stinney and what was done to him. Now, finally, the state of South Carolina says... this day. Do you know that there were seven death penalty exonerations, not in 1944, today in the year 2014? Seven people who were set to be executed, and it turned out they didn't do it. Let me show you the pictures of those seven folks. Yep, six out of the seven just happened to be African American. History rains down on us through the generations. This is not over. In fact, for those guys who were on death row, it took on average 30 years to clear their names. 30 years they sat on death row when they were perfectly innocent. George Stinney was also perfectly innocent, but they needed a scapegoat. And in this country, especially in the South, when they needed a scapegoat, 
You always knew where they were going to turn. Doesn't mean things haven't gotten better, but we're certainly not at the end of that process. And we've all got to learn from this and work together to make a better system that works for all of us so that we can all proudly call it our justice system. We're not there yet.